Excuse me, little dog. Oh. All right, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful summer evening here in the collapse of everything. It is a Friday night. It is July 12th, baby. And I think I finally have some privacy here and bugs in a jar farm. Maybe the vacation rental guests are out watching the dwindling lightning bug show here at the aptly named Bugs in a Jar. But uh, being Friday night, <coughs> you know what that means. It is time for our Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup rep. For the first time I've come back since taking my week off <coughs> of doom scrolling. Uh, so I had to, this rant had to just be created in the last 24 hours. But don't worry, it's no problem getting together and ain't gonna happen. Roundup rant, <coughs> especially... Not, it's not just Friday, guys. It is July 12th, and we all know what July 12th is. It is July 12th is the UN's, what the hell is it called? Okay, this is according to the United Nations. Today, July 12th is the International Day of Combating Sand and Dust Storms. All right, being celebrated for the first time today. And I bet you did not even know this. So the things you learn on Collapse Chronicles. Yes, the, the International Day of Combating Sand and Dust Storms. <clears throat> Last I heard, the, the, there's so much sand and dust blowing around the planet. It, it might be the only thing keeping, um, you, you know, like the southern U.S. being uh, obliterated off the face of the map. Uh, by a hurricane. There, there is so much of this shit blowing out of Africa that uh, maybe it can keep the hurricanes away. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what is International Day of Combating Sand and Dust Storms? The resolution calls on countries to observe today with educational and other activities that raise public awareness of the importance of combating sand and dust storms for public health, improving land use, enhancing food security and livelihoods, and do not forget promoting resilience to climate change. You know, Guys, I, I, I think the UN, who is that guy, Antonio Guterres, you know, the UN might as well just go ahead and declare tomorrow, July 13th, uh, International Ain't Gonna Happen Day. Just get it over with, Antonio. Throw in the fucking towel. The canary in the coal mine is dead. Uh, the window of opportunity uh, has slammed shut. Uh, all the game changers have rolled over and died. Throw in the towel, Antonio, and just make it international ain't gonna happen day. <clears throat> and be done with it. Uh, but it's not just a day. Okay, Any, anybody who thinks uh, this is just one day, it is an entire decade. An entire decade. <clears throat> In addition to today, the UN also declares the decade 2025 to 2034 as the decade 
to combat increasing sand and dust storms from Africa to China. Uh, I guess they're not thinking of our uh, of this, our own damn country here. Yes, I think it is the uh, the decade of ain't gonna happen. 2025 to 2034. Oh, Jesus. Okay, and this is in no particular order. <clears throat> We're going to go from dust storms in Africa to Lake Shasta. Billions of gallons of water from Lake Shasta disappearing into thin air. Hundreds of millions of gallons of water in Lake Shasta and other major reservoirs in Northern California have been disappearing into thin air. Considering the region has suffered recently through some of the most extreme heat ever recorded, water evaporating off the lakes in vast quantities has not surprised water managers in one day <clears throat> on July 3rd, almost 300 million gallons of water evaporated off Lake Shasta in one day. And so, of course, <clears throat> what are you going to do? How about covering the, the reservoir? We're going to put a big tarp over Lake Shasta and keep the water from evaporating. I, I've actually had this idea about my pond. Uh, a big, let's throw a tarp over, uh, over Lake Shasta while covering reservoirs such as Lake Shasta might not seem feasible. Yes, to those doomers questioning uh, anyone who claims that covering a reservoir the size of Lake Shasta might not seem feasible. Some clueless fucking morons have considered such proposals. <clears throat> Proposed geoengineering techniques for reducing reservoir evaporation, including covering the surface water with thin films of organic compounds, reflective plastics, or extremely lightweight shades. Yes. Uh, during the 2015 drought, the city of Los Angeles experimented with reducing evaporation by covering reservoirs with plastic balls to reduce the heat over the water, but having ping pong balls on the water did not become a long-term solution. Yes, this guy there talking about, uh, I can imagine uh, how he was trying to keep a straight face. Bader said covering Lake Shasta with any material could be difficult considering the size of the reservoir, which is the largest man-made lake in California. Remember when they were, what were they going to plug the deep water horizon uh, Oil well legal. It went and ping uh, golf balls. Remember when they were talking about seriously discussing plugging the the deep water horizon uh, oil well leak with golf balls. Uh, good lord. All right, we're just going to look at one article from today's medium.com from none other than uh, techno-utopian and hopium addict himself, Will Lockett. <clears throat> All right. Even Will Lockett saying 
that ain't going to happen. The Paris Agreement is dead. We have failed. You know, when Will Lockett uh, throws in the towel on something, you know it's dead. I have some horrific news. Yes. The Copernicus Climate Change Service, a world leader in climate study, recently announced that global temperatures between July 2023 and June 24 were the highest on record. In fact, the global average temperatures over that time was 1.64 degrees Celsius hotter than in pre-industrial times. Why is this news horrific? Well, it's the first time, the first time since Sam Mitchell started uh, uh, predicting the day that it was signed that it ain't going to happen and was a fucking joke. Uh, the first time since then, we have broken past the Paris Agreement's goal of keeping global warming below one and a half degrees C. In fact, it takes us worrying close to the Paris Agreement's backup target of limiting global temperature increase to well below 2 degrees Celsius. Yes, but uh, Will is not, he's throwing in the towel on one and a half, but don't worry, Will Lockett is still fighting with the, uh, still smoking that hopium pipe. The goal of limiting global warming to one and a half degrees C is now practically dead. We would have to massively change the global culture and global economy in just a few years to meet that target. But the two degree limit is still just about achievable. If we make sizable and consistent progress over the coming decade and a bit, it is still possible. The global economy will suffer, ecosystems will collapse, and our quality of life will go substantially down. But it is livable, and we can just about mitigate the impact of two degrees of warming. As such, this Copernicus data is the giant red flag that it is our last chance saloon to save the planet from ourselves and have a future that is not a vision of hell. Dun, 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 dun. So while uh, even the biggest uh, hopium smoker on medium.com has thrown in the towel on this bullshit Paris Agreement one and a half degree. Take a wild guess. Who do you think is still uh, is still uh, claiming that one and a half C can happen? If your answer is Michael Mann, Michael Mann, even when Will Lockett throws in the fucking towel on International Ain't Gonna Happen Day. Uh, we have Michael Mann still talking about you doomers. This is from this article. Out of control heat is making Earth more weird and more deadly. So they're talking about the same thing that Will is. For the third consecutive month, Earth's average monthly temperature has broken all previous records, continuing a streak that began in June of 2023. Significantly, the European Climate Service Copernicus added that the world has been one and a half degrees Celsius higher than pre-industrial levels for more than a year now, pushing the planet up against the threshold established by the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. Yes, 
So then, uh, you know, all of these doomers coming on and uh, throwing in the towel on the one and a half C, but we have Captain Planet himself, Michael Mann. Uh, you know, I'm kind of jealous. I heard Sandy just a few minutes ago, you know, talking about uh, being blocked by Michael Mann. I guess the only reason I'm the only Doomer I know that has not been blocked by Michael Mann is because I have never, I have never in my entire life been on any of Michael Mann's whatever, Twitters or whatever the hell he's on, Facebook, uh, I have never you, you know, joined any discussion being led by Michael. And so that's the only reason I haven't been blocked. I think I need to uh, find out how to get on Michael Mann's uh, site to see how long it takes me to get blocked. So what is Michael Mann? All these doomers. Throw it in the towel. Okay. <clears throat> If there is a, if there is any, if there is any, if there is any, if there is any, it is that humanity's repeated breaching of that one and a half degree Celsius threshold is not permanently ominous. Dr. Mike Lee Mann a climatologist in the University of Pennsylvania told Salon that the threshold being discussed is a trend line and not a static point. Blah, blah, blah. Take it away, Michael Mann. It is defined in terms of the trend line and it is still possible to avoid crossing one and a half degree C through rapid decarbonization. It's not a question of climate physics or technology, but politics, at least at this point. And, uh, 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 okay, even assuming that this clueless fucking moron Michael Mann were correct, and he's full of shit, if anybody, absolutely full of shit, but, but even if he weren't full of shit, and it was up to politicians, it still ain't going to happen. There, 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 there is no fucking way, uh, I, I, don't go, I, I don't give a shit what Michael Mann or any other hopium uh, smoker has to say about it. I've been saying day one, uh, not only is one and a half not going to happen, and we've already lost that one, this two degree bullshit. We're going to go flying through that. Anyway, Michael Mann. Okay. What is going on with seabirds? Seabirds and tropical storms. <clears throat> New study warns seabird populations face catastrophic decline due to unexpected factor. More than 20,000 birds were lost in the blink of an eye. And so this is this long article talking about, uh, you know, as climate change is ramping up, uh, it's what's going on with seabirds. As the changing climate affects our lives with dramatic weather events and rising temperatures, fragile wildlife is also being impacted in a catastrophic way. A new study has found specifically multiple populations of seabirds are facing grave long-term risks as the overheating of our atmosphere is causing more frequent tropical storms. And then they 
they break all of this down they talk about on this one island where this cyclone that no one's ever heard of uh, in Australia last year uh, killed 20,000 birds in one night um, and the seabird population in the region collapsed by 80 to 90 percent and in one night so anyway but don't worry there is something you can do about it. There is something that you, you, right now, you can do about a Category 5 tropical cyclone in Australia uh, killing 20,000 seabirds in one night. So there finally, there is something that we can do. <clears throat> individuals can do their part in protecting the seabirds by taking action toward lowering their contribution to the warming climate, reducing your food and clothing waste. Okay. Reduce your food and clothing weight waste and buy an electric vehicle. There you go. There you go. You reduce your food waste and whatever your clothing waste. Buy an electric vehicle and there will be no more Category 5 cyclones wiping out seabird populations in Western Australia. It's right here in the mainstream media. Don't say you never hear news you can use on Collapse Chronicles. <coughs> okay, but I want to uh, like turn the tables on these doomers because sometimes Michael Mann is right. Okay, you know, every once in a while Michael Mann. Uh, here we have this one. Blind mystic Baba Vanga says the end times will commence in 2025. Yes. Baba Vanga was a blind Bulgarian clairvoyant known for her alleged powers of precognition. She died in 1996, but uh, her predictions live on. Some reports claim that Vanga warned that the world would end in 2023 due to nuclear bioweapons and a solar storm, but I guess that one did not happen. Okay, but here is Baba Vanga's timeline for the end of humanity. All right, in 2025, a conflict in Europe will devastate the continent's population. I'm going to say ain't going to happen. 2028, humans will begin to explore Venus as an energy source. Ain't going to happen. Now, 2033, she was predicting back before her death in 1996. In 2033, the polar ice caps will melt raising sea levels to drastic heights worldwide. Now, of course, uh, I guess Baba Vanga did not realize that if the North Pole melts, it will not raise sea levels one inch. But uh, maybe she was talking about the South Pole. We will know in nine years. 
How about this one? 2076 communism will spread to countries across the world. Uh, don't see much evidence of that, Baba. Because here in 2024, fascism is spreading to countries across the world. And my guess, if we have a world in 2076, communism will be down the list. All right, 2130, humans will make alien contact. I'm going to let that one go. 2170, a drought will devastate much of the world. Now, 2170, I'm okay with that one. The year 3005, Earth will go to war with a civilization on Mars. Ain't going to happen. 3797, okay. In the year... 3797, humans will have to vacate the earth because it has become uninhabitable. In, well, I would say by the year 3797, uh, I, I have uh, no problem that humans will have to vacate the earth because it has become uninhabitable. But I think she's suggesting that humans will vacate the Earth when it becomes uninhabitable sometime between now and 3797, and that ain't going to happen. And then in the year 5079, the world, whatever that means, so 1,500 years after humans are gone, the world will end. In 5079, I'm, I'm hoping that the world will be able to be beginning again. Okay, so this next comment, I've already heard this comment being discussed on another Doomer channel somewhere. This comment was being read out. This comment on Collapse Chronicles was being read out on another channel. So I'm just going to put an AGH right on it that sometimes doomers are every bit as full of shit as the anti-doomer brigade such as Michael Mann is full of shit. It's not like the Michael Mann uh, hopium gang has cornered the market on being full of shit. Okay, I'm not going to break all this one down because I'm just going to splat a big AGH <clears throat> with a couple of maybes, but I'm going to let you figure out the maybes. Okay, this is from a fellow I had never heard of until yesterday, Glenn Savale. <clears throat> Take it away, Glenn, and tell us what ain't going to happen. Very soon, in one to three years, we will be well into the end game as we see everywhere. Chickens cannot lay eggs anymore. We see it now in the south of Asia. To where cattle cannot reproduce or even grow because grass won't grow. In the next one to three years, grass will become extinct. No more beef means the end. Drought in our southwest is already an existential threat. Give it another two years, it will get to where you will need an indoor arboretum slash farm that is air conditioned and solar powered with electric security fencing and a lot of defensive arms. As riots ensue, we will be fighting for antibiotics. This is in the next one to three years. As riots ensue, we will be fighting 
for antibiotics and fighting against a national open door prison policy. Uh, and again, I don't know if he means we're going to be letting too many prisoners out or putting too many prisoners in. A small bite of food we will get to wash down with a cup of water contaminated with microplastics and PFAS chemicals. Dead fish floating everywhere, rabid animals, fires consuming everything. And I think his last three words were supposed to be, you will see. So one to three years, uh, well, the microplastics, the PFA chemicals, and the uh, fires consuming everything <clears throat> might happen. But uh, what might still be happening is the lightning bug show here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. So I need to wrap this up and uh, get out there and enjoy the lightning bug show at Bugs in a Jar while I still can. Happy UN International Ain't Gonna Happen Day tomorrow. Bye, guys.